This is Steven with my review of the Nixplay 10 Touch Digital Smart Frame for Best Buy. Both these frames were extremely easy to set up and I had a great time trying them out. And throughout this video, I'll be showing you everything you need to know about these frames and what aspects make them kind of rise up against the other types of smart frames available on the market. Both these frames are easy to use and are able to be turned on with the simple press of a screen there. If you don't want to use the smart app that comes included with it, you can also try out the different functions they have on it there, such as a built-in clock that can be changed on the screen. And we'll get started with the setup right now. Now, as I said, both frames were extremely easy to set up, taking less than a few minutes to get started. They come with a setup guide with extremely easy to follow photo instructions. That took me less than a couple minutes to get started. They both come with a stand. You can see the classic white frame stand there and a normal power charging cable. I currently have them both plugged in. And with the new black edition, it's similar, except the stand is a bit more complex. And it's a bit hard to do there with one hand, but you can pull it out to get more of a lean to it, depending on where you're setting it up. It also comes with a starter pack for the wall mounting capability instructions, as well as screws with everything included, and a bit of a more advanced setup guide, as it does come with the wall mounting inclusion as well. Now both frames look great not only in their visual quality but also their design as they felt quite durable thanks to the concave design making me not have to worry about it falling over and damaging the screen and they felt very sturdy despite it being very lightweight. The screens are in HD quality for videos and pictures with a lot of built-in effects you can use by using the touchscreen controls here. Now with the touchscreen controls I'm able to power off the device, open up and view the different playlists, selecting different ones or seeing what I have in the gallery. Some settings there for some more advanced options like the display mode. Uh, in the display mode I did end up changing the fit screen to being a fill screen so my photos that have gaps in the top or bottom are able to fit as well as different types of cuts I, you can have it associated with. It starts off as random but I like the crossfade just so it's more consistent and kind of looks nice and clean with my photos. I did notice a little bit of input lag when I was messing with the settings, but it wasn't enough to bother me. And as you can see here, it is capable of playing videos with sound as they both have built-in speakers in the back as well. And after this, we'll take a look at the app. The app itself is a quite clean, minimalistic design. I found it very intuitive to use and I had no real problems when I was having different playlists made and connecting them to my different frames. I have both frames set up here. And in this setting, you're also able to select what playlists each frame is able to see. If you have multiple frames, this is great for having different playlists for different areas of your house, as you might not want to have both frames playing the same photos. You can also upload photos directly to the frames from your phone or photos on your phone as well. Uh, this is where you'd be able to see if other people would like to upload to your phones. They're able to send it via email or through the app as well. I found the settings were pretty straightforward, having a little bit of extra customization for the app itself overall. And as you can see here, I have one of my specific playlists. This is the sharing option. Normally you can have up to five members sharing it, but I have the Nick's Play subscription, which allows 10. And I was able to add people in so they could add photos quite easily this way as well. And another aspect I wanted to touch on was the Nick's Play membership. Increasing your frames, playlists you can share, number of people you can share with those playlists and the overall cloud storage of your device. It does come with a paid plan, which some people might be caught off guard by, but I understood the price once I saw the features that it provided. And they're by no means necessary to fully enjoy your frame, it just adds a nice bonus for those that want to customize a bit extra. Now I'll be trying out the Nixplay photo frame here. As you can see, I opened up to take a picture of my cat sitting next to me while I was writing this review. And then once I had the photo uploaded towards the app, I went into the editing section and I was able to access a number of different customizing options. And just for a straightforward example, I added a few effects, seeing what worked, what I could add on there. Uh, just a matter of a few seconds, trying out the light leak effect there, as well as a nice little border to give it a little bit more personality. And then last but not least, of course, a sticker just to memorize the time and kind of commemorate the experience of taking a photo of my cat. And once I had everything done in less than a minute, I just had a nice touched up photo. Of course, there are more advanced options you can do, as I made the stay positive image of my dog earlier as well. It's just a nice little extra feature for those wanting to spice up their photos and their playlists a bit more. Now, after having had a look at the frames over a couple days, I will say, well, I never saw myself needing a smart frame until now. Now that I've actually tried one hands on, I can definitely see the value that it provides, especially with the amount of features that it has in both these devices. 
I will say there are two features I do wish were included, one of which is the ambient sound that some smartphones might have. I feel like it'd be nice to have music playing as in general ambience while you're watching your photos. And I wish that I was able to access the smart motion powered directly with the frame itself, but I was still able to use the app nonetheless and it didn't affect my experience. Overall, I was extremely happy with this device and all the family that I showed it to were pretty ecstatic with its features and capabilities. I do think it's a great gift this holiday season, and if you want to learn more about it, feel free to check out my blog post linked, and if you have any questions at all, leave a comment and we'll be trying to answer them as best we can.